Alright guys, so a few people have asked uh, how I'm going to seal uh, the transition between a square step and the uh, the underbody uh, which is the curved section of the rear tail so uh, we'll work on that today uh Brackets. Uh, this bracket here was just riveted on through there with sealant. That that angle lines up with that angle. There's some more bracket supports in through there, which tie that whole keel uh, down. So now just put this uh, sheet on. And that's the uh, the back transition finished. There's that one through there. Okay, so got this side done. Um, the back transition to the tail section. So you can see it's just curved slightly up, and it's tapered into the actual. And this here, this this plate is uh, going to have a welded bung on it. So you can see this the step there, and uh, this lip here may seem a bit counterintuitive with uh, water having water sit here. Um, However, it was actually deliberate, and the reason for that is so that uh, I can actually fill this. It's almost like a tray for um, polyurethane sealant. Because if I, I cut it back here, which was level, uh, I had nothing really there to seal that edge properly. Um, problem is, uh, I wanted to get a really good seal there because this can this part here um, will be very close to the water, potentially underwater sometimes. So I wanted to really make sure that it was sealed right off. So my intention with this little lip here, and you can see it's already been sealed in there when I put the sheet on, but now I'm going to run another fillet of polyurethane all the way along that edge both sides so that is actually going to um, seal that off completely this year is going to be where my strut bracket is so there's still a bit of work here so i'm not worried about sealing this off just yet but um yeah that's how it's that's how it's coming up Blends in quite nicely. And that's the inside. All sealed up. There's a little drain. There's a little drain down through here so that if any water hits in here, it will actually drain back, drain back to uh, the lowest point of the hole. How you going guys, back at it again today. So today I'm working on the uh, screen, the front screen. It's gonna look really cool. I'm actually gonna put tinted screen on. So this is it here. It's gonna look very cool. <clears throat> so this is what I got up to and finished uh, last weekend. So the back transition and steps being done. So that's that's basically how that finished up. I'll show you how to get these bends in uh, tube with uh, 
without a bender. So I've actually, I've got a bender here, pipe bender, which bends around a mandrel. So I've got one of those, but a lot of the time you need a curve that actually doesn't um, bend, that doesn't actually follow that bend. So uh, I'll show you how to, to get this here. As you can see there, that there is the uh, the bend and curve. So it's come up quite nice. And uh, I'll show you how, how I do it uh, for one off. Yeah, obviously with the kits, it'll be bent on a template so that you'll always get the same bend every time uh, and it will fit. So, uh, but for one offs, this is a really good way of doing it to get the shape you want. And uh, as you can see, shape really comes up nice. Takes a little bit of time, but um, I'll show you how to do it um, for any projects you're doing around the place. Okay, so the reason I put this um, MDF on here, uh, purely just to get the curves that I want and where I want them. Uh, now, because this here is such a tight curve, I can't actually bend without um, uh, stressing it and without heat. I can't bend the um, windscreen around it. Um, and for ease of uh, future kits, uh, instead of having to heat heat the plastic, bend it around a mould, uh, we're actually gonna. I'm actually gonna make it. This part here, this section here is aluminium. And then uh, the rest of it is all um, windscreen. So massive windscreen. But uh, I'll just show you what I'm doing here. I've got this straight piece of tube here and I need to bend it in a curve like that to match this curve here. So what I've done is I've worked out where where it's going. So it's, it's this here, this mark. And then going to measure from there up uh, to the straight where it starts to curve. So once I know my straight section, I then know where it starts to curve. I can mark that on here and then just start working it around and uh, just trial, trial fit it as I go and adjust it. So um, I'll show you how that's So there's my straight piece. I've marked where the curve needs to start, where I want to start curving it. So all I've done here is, this is my flaring um, uh, dies that I made up. They're just a MDF. I've, but w what it is, is it's got a nice curve to it on one side um, and a flat on the other. Uh, so screwed both of them down, the tube fits in the middle. And then uh, basically I just start from where I want to put the curve. I've left this one slightly loose so as it moves around, the straight piece actually, the straight cut. You can see this straight cut here. So as I pull it, so say it's here. As I move it around, it will move with it. And all I do now is just pull a little bit at a time and move it along until the curve starts to form. So it really doesn't take much at all. Um, and you don't want to do big bends. Just little bits at a time. Move it further forward. And again. And you, you just real fine bends because if you go too much you'll put a kink in it so all I'm doing is little bits move it about an inch 25 mil an inch something like that and do it again and you can already see the curve starting to uh, form in it it's a bit of uh, guesswork um, trial and error and fit fitment so I'll go back fit it mark where I need to bend a bit more 
come back and just bend it. But you can see it's it's really quite um, an easy process. Not good if you're, you're doing mass production, but for one-offs, it's a really good way of doing it. Because, uh, if I say for example, I uh, start putting some kits together for it, uh, I won't be doing this. It'll be on a template and it will just be bent around the template, which can be done as well. So, as you can see, curve's already starting and I've got a fair bit more to go. So, I'll just start from the back, start from the beginning again, and just go a little bit more. It's important to put the same amount of pressure on every time, so that if you do multiple amounts, different pressures, you're going to get different bends, uh, bend points, but for a smooth transition, you want to have all the same forces all the way. So, you can see that's already, it's already coming up really well, so we'll, we'll trial fit this, see how it's looking, and uh, come back and do some more. All right, so you can see that is getting very close. I just need to trim this end uh, so I can get it up and fit it right in there. And uh, it might actually need a little bit of opening up. So I may have gone a little bit too far, which is easy enough to open up. So I'll mark it, cut it so it fits in, and we'll uh, keep working on it. Okay, so to... I just measured it with a tape roughly to the center of the radius to the middle is about 480. So we will roughly do that. What I'll do is I'll cut it just that fraction long, try it again, make sure that it fits. These here are great for aluminum tube, just a normal tube cutter. Usually cuts copper tube and stuff like that. But, uh, nice and quick and easy and uh, it just makes makes a nice neat cut all right so it's looking it's looking pretty good it's very close um, it actually becomes a very very tough bend and uh, it's very secure so I'll just trim it we'll go and see if how it fits Okay, so you can see I need a fraction more through the top here to bend and uh, should be spot on. Okay, so on to the second one now. I've got my template, I'll just follow this one because both sides are exactly the same. Um, but if you think what this is essentially doing is as I'm, as I'm pulling on it, it, the radius here is causing it to shrink the internal side and stretch the external side. So that's why it's important only little little bits at a time because um, otherwise you will kink this uh, tube. So by doing little bits, you're shrinking the inside radius and, the, and stretching the outside one. So uh, take your time and uh, even forces and you will, uh, you will end up with Nice curves. Okay, so nice, uh, simple, easy way to mount these tubes. I've put a, uh, a hole through the beam here. So these ones, I've got one slightly smaller that slides, slides in. Fixed through here with rivets and through the center. And that tube will reinforce uh, the internals between the two. Okay, so I've just finished uh, the curves uh, on these tubes and mounted them on. So it gives it support for the for the actual uh, windscreen. Uh, so you can see here, this section here, between here is the door. It's just gonna flip up that way, so it's hinged off here. 
which is why I've got such a solid uh, beam going all the way through. And uh, it'll basically go indoors, it'll flip up on a strut, gas strut, and uh, heaps of room to get in. Full tinted uh, windscreen, so the whole lot, whole lot is going to be tinted, it's going to look awesome I reckon. Um, still be able to see through it, just won't be able to fly at night, uh, but I'm only day VFR flying anyway, so uh, yeah, should be good. Keep the sun off you as well, so it won't be as hot in there when you're sitting on the ground. All right, guys, so this is where I got to yesterday. I got the uh, tinted screen on. I reckon it looks awesome. I like the uh, the tint look. Can't wait to see it with uh, the paint as well. And these here, so there's the, the brackets for the cabin frame. It's all uh, curved, so the back of here is actually going to be uh, aluminium because uh, this radius here is so tight that um, I can't get uh, the windscreen around it without um, stressing it and heating it. So that there from here, all aluminium down the sides. I'll have the window in the back here. And this is the, uh, the door area. So you can see plenty of, uh, plenty of opening and uh, heaps of room to get in and out. It's gonna pivot on here on a piano hinge that'll be sealed. And uh, I'll have rubber, rubber seals as well all the way around so that when the door closes, it'll push up against the seal and seal right off. So yeah, it's, um, this is a view from inside, so it's, it's very much tinted. You won't need sunglasses, but you can still see very clearly through it, even on uh, a very early morning. This is early morning, six o'clock. And uh, yeah, so it should be good. I'll get the doors on today. They'll be uh, hinged and um, on a gas strut, so they'll come up like a gull wing door. And this here, this here is the uh, um, capping to cap over the windscreen. So they're going to have screws and uh, rivets down the side. So yeah, that's that's how that's going to be finished off. It'll be completely sealed up uh, both sides, so no water will be able to get inside this seal at this all. This is what I did here to get the um, to get the screen on the right angle. I've used a uh, tube, 19 mil tube, which goes all the way through, which is fixed with this and that way as the screen actually comes down on that angle you've got the right angle and you can put the screws in on the right angle and actually you've got contact the whole way all the way through so yeah that's how it's all coming together so as i mentioned before it's free to subscribe so if you could please hit that like, subscribe and ring that bell and uh, follow along on the build and uh, we will catch you on the next one.